Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you on behalf of Terry's family and the congregation here uh, at St. Paul's to the service of the celebration of life for Terry Scalcioni. And what a life it is that we get to celebrate today. Um, hear these words of, of welcome and greeting as they come to us uh, from the scriptures. Dying, Christ destroyed our death. In rising, Christ restores our life. Christ will come again in glory. So as in baptism, Terry put on Christ. So in Christ, may she now be clothed with God's glory. Here and now, friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Friends, we have gathered here to praise God, to witness to our faith as we celebrate Terry's life. We come together in grief, acknowledging our loss. And we ask that God would grant us grace, that in pain we might find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. Amen. Let us sing together our first hymn of this service, number 384 in your red hymnals, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. I'll ask if you're able to, to stand as we sing and to uh, keep your masks on as we sing.
be seated. Let us pray. Oh God, it was you who gave us birth. And as we come to you in prayer this morning, you are even more ready to hear our prayers than we are to pray. You know our needs even before we ask. And we ask this morning, O oh God, that you would give to us now your grace. That as we shrink before the mystery of death, we might see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and of death. And help us to live as those who are prepared to die, so when our days here are accomplished, enable us to die as those who go forth to live, so that in living or dying our life is in you, and that nothing in life or in death will be able to separate us from your great love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Times like this, of services of celebration and remembrance, we always want to turn to the scriptures to see what God would say to us this day. So our first reading comes from the 23rd Psalm. Uh, you can see in your bulletin it is actually printed on the opposite side of the order of worship. Um, if you'd like to read it uh, along with me, you're welcome to do that. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And from the book of Revelation, 21st chapter. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who is seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. And then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things. I will be their God and they will be my children. And finally, from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. Jesus speaking to his disciples on the night before he met his own death. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you also may, may be where I am. You know the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father 
except through me. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm going to invite um, both Patrick and Emma to come now. I want you to come over to the lectern side and um, to share a couple of readings that they found in uh, honor of their grandma. So uh, here's a uh, poem, it's called Give Me Away, and it, I think it uh, kind of describes Terry's life and uh, kind of what she believed in. When I die, give what's left of me away to children and old men that wait to die. And if you need to cry, cry for your brother walking the street beside you. And when you need me, put your arms around anyone and give them what you need to give to me. I want to leave you with something, something better than words or sounds. Look for me in the people I've, lo I've known or loved. And if you cannot give me away, at least let me live on your eyes and not on your mind. You can love me most by letting hands touch hands, by letting bodies touch bodies, and by letting go of children that need to be free. Love doesn't die, people do. So when all that's left of me is love, Give me away. Amen. Thank you. Her journey's just begun. Don't think of her as gone away. Her journey's just begun. Life holds so many facets. The earth is only one. Just think of her as resting from the sorrows and the tears in a place of warmth and comfort where there are no days and no years. Think of how she must be wishing that we could note today, how nothing but our sadness can really pass away. And think of her as living in the hearts of those she touched. For nothing loved is ever lost, and she was loved so much. Thank you. Thank you both. We want to offer an opportunity uh, for any of you that are here this morning. Uh, to share uh, stories that you um, may have uh, of your life with Terry, or it could be a single uh, thing that happened or a life lesson that she has left you with. And we have uh, Megan, George, and Shannon to kind of uh, make their way around the sanctuary. Uh, for anyone that would like to speak, you can just stand where you are, and they'll come to you uh, with a microphone so that you can share. And we, we do have a number of folks that are joining us online uh, today, so they'll also hear uh, your words of testimony. Ellen? Terry was a member of the Elizabeth Brubaker Circle here at the church. She participated fully up through the last meeting that we had last February. She was a very active member, but we never heard a negative word from her, although she would participate in discussions, never a negative word. She was our treasurer, taking care of us and giving us a monthly accounting of our funds. She was loved by all of us. There was a picture of part of our group up there, she, and she will be sorely missed. Thank you. Who else would like to right up here in front? So Terry spent every 4th of July with my husband and my mother over there and our circle of friends, and we had a really great time, and we'd always go to the parade together. But one year I said to her, you know, that parade goes right by your house. We could sit right in front of your house. And she said to me, oh, no, totally indignant. I want to be with the whole gang. She was <laughs> 98 years old when she said that, and she was a great part of our gang. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, Walter? And then up here in front. Okay, thanks. Chris was a special friend. We had a lot of memories together. 
here at the church and out of the church. And uh, we often uh, just remembered one of the cool expenses, ex experiences was one summer and uh, we had a lady that we called the garlic lady. And she would sit right up about the second row. And Chris was over here on this side. And uh, she thought that maybe this was Sean that was getting uh, this uh, odor. So uh, she moved Sean herself back a few rows in order to get away from the lady. But uh, the woman became known as the garlic lady. And she would often come to the early service that we had here in the church. But had a lot of good memories with Chris and with the family. And our prayers have been with, with Dave and the family through these days. Thank you. Um, basically, the one thing is the clean plate club. <laughs> Whenever you were with Terry, especially as a young child, anything that was put on the plate had to be eaten off the plate. I know. She's so <laughs> <laughs> I was. <laughs> we were lucky enough to have Terry invite my sister and me down to her shore house in Point Pleasant, and it was always a. Uh, a very eventful dinner because Uncle Tony used to cook and Aunt Terry used to say, you gotta eat what's on the plate. <laughs> she was a great aunt. She, I thank her for what she did for us as young kids. Um, she was incredible. And I'm happy that she was my aunt. Thank you. Terry? Terry was a beloved friend. I thank God she was such a gift to her country, to her church, to her family, to anybody in her circle, anyone that knew her. And whenever she was my private nurse, <laughs> whenever I had a problem, I'd call her up. I said, Do I use hot water or cold water? And she would say, Well, Mary. Listen to your body, you know, and she'd always tell me that. <laughs> and she said, things have changed in nursing. I said, still, I like the old traditional. I like to know what I should do. I could call her any time, and I just loved her. And what a joy she has in heaven now. Amen. Imagine friends from 100 years, all her friends from the Navy, all her friends from her churches, all her friends from her family. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. So my heart weeps for, for myself, but not for Terry, because she's home. She made the 100, and I was wishing she would make it all the way to 110. <laughs> I'm trying to make it to 85, and, but uh, never to be forgotten. And I noticed in all the pictures that you showed, her smile was the same, every single picture, because she smiled from her loving, wonderful, God-filled, spirit-filled heart. She didn't pretend she would never brag about herself, so I tried to brag for her. But I just um, blessings on the family, and what a joy it will be when we all, when we all see Jesus and we all get to heaven. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Mary. Anyone else? Well, thank you all for your words of testimony. I'm sure that there are many, many 
encounters and, and memories and stories uh, rattling around in your, in your mind and in your hearts. And those are the things that you'll be sharing, I'm sure, with each other um, as, as these days uh, unfold. Um, before I uh, start, uh, some formal comments I want to make uh, this morning. I want to echo Mary's comments about Terry's smile. Um, it was ever-present. <laughs> And I love the picture that's on the bulletin. I saw it up on the, on the screen as well. And it just captures so much of, of Terry's personality and, and her countenance, uh, if you will. And I thought about that a little bit um, preparing for this morning. And, and to be able to, to, to have that authentic smile on her face after surviving like serving in World War II and the Korean War, to have that still, that, that positive outlook on life. And then I thought, she even survived church rummage sales. <laughs> and man, if you can do that and come out with a smile on your face, that is truly saying something. <laughs> you all know exactly what I'm talking about because you're laughing right now. I came across a poem written by Linda Ellis, and I found it very insightful and, and thought-provoking for our time together today. Her poem is called The Dash, and I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's quite long, but the general idea that, that Linda is talking about in the poem, and I will share a few lines from it in just a few moments, um, she starts out explaining the poem uh, this way. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. And in the course of his eulogy, he referred to the two significant dates, the birth date and the date of passing. You'll see it on our bulletin cover this morning. Um, you know, Terry was born September 4th, 1920, and passed away March 19th, 2021. But the speaker that, that, that uh, Linda is referring to here said he, he, what he noted was that what mattered most wasn't the birth date or the death date, it was the little dash that appeared between the two. He said that little line that appears between our birth date and our date of passing, that dash between Terry's birth date and the date of her death is a powerful little line. In Terry's case, that line went on for a hundred years. But regardless of the length of time that, that that line represents, that dash shouts to us, I have lived here, don't forget me. And we won't. Linda Ellis says it this way, the, the dash represents all the time that our loved one, our friend, spent alive on earth, and those who knew them and loved them, and those that were loved by them and were known by them, know the value of that little dash. Here's a stanza from her poem. It matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So when our eulogy is read, with our life's action to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about you and how you spent your dash? Here's what the scripture says about our dash and about Terry's dash. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Friends, without a doubt, Terry fought the good fight. She finished her race, and she kept the faith. She kept her faith. 
And for those reasons, we can gather this morning to to celebrate Terry's life, to, to celebrate her dash, if you will. She fought the good fight, she ran a good race, and finished her course in faith. Simply put, Terry's life was all about service to God, service to her country, service to her church and service to her community, and I would add, service to her family. And we are all the better for it. I can also say this morning, unequivocally, that God was pleased with the way that Terry lived her dash. Because she lived it with dignity and class, with purpose and meaning and with love and faith. It mattered to so many. It mattered to our country. It mattered to this community. It mattered to our church. It mattered to her family and friends. It mattered to this world that she occupied for 100 years, that she lived and died as a person of deep faith and practice and what it meant to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And now Terry has been welcomed home by God. Not for a season, not for another hundred years, but for all eternity. An eternity of love and peace in the presence of God and all the saints of life. And I would believe if she were here today, well, if she were still here today, we wouldn't be here today, right? I don't mean to be, but, you know. If she were encouraging us today, let me see if I can dig out of my own hole here, she would remind us all that we only get one dash. And to live every moment in faith and in love and in deep relationships with the people that God has put around you. Make sure that you live your dash so fully that it continues to shout love long after you've gone. Friends, Terry's dash, Terry's life will shout love long after she's gone. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Well, God, it's in moments like this that we are torn. We are sad. We are in grief that we will no longer see Terry face to face. But her life and her legacy will live on in our midst, in the midst of her family, in the midst of her church, in the midst of her community because she leaves behind a legacy of love and faith, a legacy of involvement and relationships. And we thank you, O God, for her life, but we also celebrate that she is now with you for all eternity. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Let us pray. God of us all, your love never ends. When all else fails, you still are God. We pray to you for one another in our need and all anywhere who mourn with us this day. To those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, give strength. To all who have sinned, give mercy. To all who sorrow, give your peace. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another. In all our ways, O God, we trust you. And to you, with your church on earth and in heaven, we offer honor and glory now and forever. And we thank you, O God, for we know that you have received Terry into the arms of your mercy. 
And we would ask that you would raise her up to be with your saints of light. And that, oh God, you would receive us also and raise us into new life. And help us so to live and serve you in this world that we enter into your joy in the world to come. Amen. Let us uh, sing together. We can remain seated as we sing together number 314 in the garden. Terry's favorite songs was Abide With Me. And Althea's going to sing that for us as Alan plays now. Thank you. 
Guess what? just wanted to make that known and th just to correct things because so many people would think especially of the family we wonder what I was talking about <laughs> so thank you all we have a service at one o'clock this afternoon now at the beach pavilion for Chris Fulton another church member who passed away recently and well thank you because I've been worrying all morning about saying the wrong name <laughs> so you've let me off the hook so thank you but thank you for sharing and uh, we know that you have a, a strong relationship with both Chris and Terry and we we thank you for that so uh, thank you again for for sharing that let's pray together God of love we thank you for all with which you have blessed us to this day for the gift of joy and days of health and strength and for the gift of your abiding presence and promise in days of pain and grief. We thank you for home and friends and for our place in your church with all who have faithfully lived and died. Above all else, O oh God, we thank you for Jesus who knew our griefs, who died our death, and who rose for our sake, and who lives and prays for us. So as he taught us, so let us now pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As you know, Terry served in the uh, United States Navy, and we have members of the Navy who will come now and honor uh, Terry's life and service to our country.
Amen. Amen. Our closing song for our service this morning is number 702. Sing with all the saints in glory. I will invite you to, if you're able to stand as we sing together. family would like to uh, invite everyone to cross an orange in Asbury Park following uh, the service. And now would you receive the blessing? Now may the God of peace who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in every good so that you may do his will working among us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace.